Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Justin here and today I've got the full comparison for you between perhaps two of my favorite Android phones of the year so far, the LG G3 and the HTC One M8. With some key features seen from both companies including the Quad G display on the LG G3 and the boom sound speakers on the HTC One M8. There are a lot to like about these two flagship smartphones, so in this video I will take you through the different categories that we are going to compare with the LG G3 and the HTC One M8 in order to help you decide which one is better for you. Both these devices are powered by a Snapdragon 801 processor with the M8 clocked in at 2.3GHz and the LG G3 clocked in slightly higher at 2.5GHz. When it comes to the RAM, the LG G3 comes in a 2 or 3 GB RAM configuration while the HTC One M8 comes with 2 gigs of RAM. So without further ado, let's move on with this comparison. So the first thing we're going to look at is the hardware and as you can see both companies did take a different approach in terms of the build quality, design and material of their phones. The LG G3 having a plastic metal looking removable back while the HTC One M8 is made 90% out of metal and in terms of the design and build quality is very similar to its predecessor, the HTC One M7. In general, I'm not a huge fan of plastic but I gotta say LG did a great job executing it, to the point where I don't really mind it at all. It feels extremely solid in the hand, it doesn't seem too slippery at all, and it also looks really nice. A lot of people were actually fooled by it and thought it was actually metal. But the fact that it is removable and replaceable is a huge plus. And the device with a 5.5 inch display comes in at 146.3mm tall and 74.6mm wide. On the other hand, the HTC One M8 in terms of height is almost exactly the same at 146.36 and in terms of width comes in at 70.96. The metal build construction of the M8 really gives you a premium feel of your device and every day when you pick it up in the morning you have that nice cold aluminum feel. One huge downside however is the device is extremely slippery. And the fact that the back plate isn't really removable or replaceable after you drop and possibly dent your device, that may be a downside for some. As you can see here, although the devices are pretty much the same height, the LG G3 does have a significantly larger display at 5.5 inch compared to 5 inches on the HTC One M8. However, HTC does have to make room for its great boom sound speakers and after you listen to those in person, I think for some people it would be a worth it trade off. On the bottom of these devices, you can notice that both companies did decide to put the 3.5mm headphone jacks on the bottom, and they are on different sides. And of course, you also have your micro USB port for charging and syncing. When it comes to the weight and thickness of these devices, the M8 comes in at 9.35mm thick as opposed to the 8.9mm thickness on the LG G3, and the M8 with its metal construction is a bit heavier at 160 grams as opposed to 149 on the G3. So now we're going to talk about the display, and this is one of the categories or the selling points of the LG G3. It features a 5.5 inch 2560 by 1440 resolution 534 ppi quad HD display, as opposed to the 5 inch 1920 by 1080 resolution full HD display with a 441 ppi on the M8. And when you take a look at the display on the LG G3, I mean it really just jumps out to you, and that is to be expected with the PPI of 534, which is absolutely impressive by the way. With the 1080p display, it still looks really nice and I really have no problems with that, but I feel that the future is going towards Quad HD displays. At the moment however, one downside is that apps don't really take advantage of the Quad HD display and those extra pixels, so for now, you're really just going to be able to enjoy the Quad HD resolution in the menus, the icons from LG, as well as high resolution photos that you're viewing. And also not to forget some 4K content. When it comes to the HTC One M8, the 1080p display isn't half bad, and I'm sure that's what most people are used to nowadays. Most of the market is still at 1080p, but I imagine in the next year or so, we are going to be going towards Quad HD. The HTC One M8 actually has one of my favorite displays, because the colors are still very vibrant, but they don't exactly exaggerate anything in terms of saturation, as you would see on a Samsung display. So you can always count on it to give you a very accurate color representation. So now taking a look at a photo on both of these displays, you can realize that the high resolution image really takes advantage of the Quad HD display. It is able to view it in great detail, but what we're trying to look at here is the actual color representation. If I was a nitpick, I would say that the LG G3 does have a little bit of a more contrasted display in terms of the sky, and the viewing angles are a bit better on the HTC One M8. But nevertheless, I'm sure you won't be disappointed with either of these displays. 
So now onto the software, and although both these devices are running Android 4.4.2 KitKat, I will tell you that the experience is quite different on both of them. The LG G3 running the Optimus UI, and the HTC One M8 running the Sense 6 UI, which I've been a huge fan of. So first let's take a look at the LG G3, and I gotta say that what really ruined my experience last year was the software on the LG G2, but I think that did a very good job in terms of cleaning it up this year. But taking a look at the app drawer, as you can see, it is pretty much what you would expect, and your different ways of sorting it, as well as your widgets located on the other tab, and also the ability to search for your different applications. I also want to note that the keyboard on the LG G3 is great, everything is very easy to type on and having the buttons up the top is always nice, but as you know on Android you can always change up the keyboards. In terms of customization, just hold on the screen and you will be able to drag your apps very easily to the home screen. That is kind of the layout that I actually really like. And editing your different home screens and reformatting them is very easy as well by just pinching from both corners. From holding on your home button, it will take you to Google Now, like we see on a lot of devices now, and from holding it for a few seconds and dragging it to the corners, it will allow you to either go to Google Now or Quick Memo from anywhere. There's just a look at your current running apps, you can close them all at once and head back to the home menu. When it comes to the notification tab, I think that they've done a good job changing it up visually this year. Last year I found it pretty ugly, unfunctional with the QSlide apps, and at least this year we can hide them all and the fact that the brightness and volume sliders is still there is always nice. Of course with your quick toggle settings on the top you can also change those around as well depending on what you use most and what you would like in terms of the order of them. Moving on to the settings, I really like the layout of this as well and I have to say another thing I noticed visually is that the icons have a nice flat look to it. I'm definitely a huge fan of that and it looks great on this quad HD display. As you know on the LG G2 you also have the knock feature as the buttons are located on the back and by double tapping on the screen it will wake it and also put it to sleep when you need it to. So that was just a look at the LG G3. Now moving over to the HTC One M8, I gotta say that the software made this one of my favorite Android devices of 2014 so far. And that was mainly thanks to the visual aspect, though I do wish that the app drawer was a transparent layout and kind of more a traditional layout. But other than that, I feel that the visual, the functional, and pretty much everything in terms of the way HTC Sense 6 worked was something that I really liked. In the review, I kind of described it as a variation to stock Android, as a lot of the things did pretty much stay the same, which was great, but HTC definitely did add their twist to it with stuff like Blink Feed, which personally I actually use quite a bit. And I think that they did a very good job in terms of the visual aspect and the way that the overall skin just flowed. It was very smooth and the animations were very nice. And here's just a look at how you would add your apps and widgets and everything to the home screen. Again, very similar that we saw to the LG G3. But when it comes to the notifications, it was the layout that I really liked. It looks just like stock Android where the notification tab is pretty much empty just for the notifications. And on the top right corner, you are able to access your quick toggle settings that can also be moved around. Moving on to the settings, you can see that the icons are pretty much as clean as you can get. They have a kind of grey look to it which I'm a huge fan of and like I said you can also personalize the look and color of the kind of operating system through these settings as well. On the HTC One M8 you also have a setting that is pretty much borrowed from LG where you double tap to wake and you also double tap to sleep on the home screen. By sliding to the right side, it will take you straight to Blink Feed, and from sliding up, it will take you to your home screen. So that was just a look at the HTC One M8 and the Sense 6 UI. So as you can see, I pretty much don't have any major complaints for either of these skins on both these devices. I like the experience on both of them, but in terms of the general overall interface and the visual aspect, I gotta give the edge to HTC. I feel like they've done a tremendous job in Sense 6, to the point where I actually like it a little bit more than stock Android. So now we're going to take a look at the camera. Of course, a camera should be very highly regarded in terms of your decision as to which phone you should purchase, as that is something that a lot of people use nowadays. And both companies have definitely gone a pretty different direction. On the HTC One M8, you do have what HTC calls an ultra pixel camera. It is in theory 4 megapixels, however the pixels within these sensors are said to be much larger, at 2.0 microns. And HTC claims that thanks to the larger pixel size within the sensor, it is able to capture more light but still retain good detail. And above that you do have your dual camera which allows you to refocus your images in post. 
On the LG G3, they have gone a more traditional route with a 13 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization, which some people may find that very important. One thing that I really like, and I'm sure a lot of you will as well, is the laser autofocus. The autofocus, going by its name, is laser fast. What it does is it sends lasers to the subject you would like to focus on, and it bounces back in order to determine the distance from the subject. So first I want to show you guys the software and starting out with the LG G3, I gotta say I really like the look of it. You can either have a very simple look where you just tap on the screen to take the picture and hide everything else while going down to the settings you have options like your grid, your timer, um, and also the quality that you would like to set. And the different modes include the panorama mode and also the front and rear facing camera at the same time. That's just the switching camera button and also once again showing you guys the three buttons located on the top right corner or the left corner um, allows you to hide everything and just tap on the screen to take a photo. Moving on to the photo editor, however, it uses the Google photo editor and I actually think it does a great job. It allows you to still tweak your images through the auto enhance, be able to add all different filters, do your standard cropping and rotating and all these stuff like that. So I definitely would take some time to take a look at that in order to take advantage of the full potential of the app in order to enhance the image and make it the way you would like. On the HTC One I made, however, it does look somewhat different, but I would say that the icons actually look pretty similar. You have all of your different modes in terms of auto, night, macro, etc., landscape, as well as your white balance, your exposure. For people who would really want to set the settings on their camera before they take the image exactly the way that they would like, and by sliding down the screen, it will switch the camera. So I really like the way that they've used the gestures, and I think both companies have actually done a very good job executing it. It, and the nice menus with the circle icons here is also very handy. Again, you do have the dual capture, the Pan360, and the Zoe camera, as well as what they call the selfie mode with the front facing camera. But I gotta say, without a doubt, HTC and LG have two of my favorite camera apps of all Android devices. On the HTC One I made, as you know, there is the dual camera, the camera located on top of the ultra pixel camera on the rear. This captures depth information, determining the distances between the subjects, and through the photo editor allows you to kind of refocus the image, do some cool effects such as the foregrounder, seasons, 3D perspective, etc. This isn't exactly the best example in terms of the picture, but for macro pictures, it definitely allows you to play around with it and have a lot of fun with that. Of course, through the effects, you are also able to add some very cool filters to your pictures, as well as be able to rescale them, um, crop them, rotate them, etc. So now it's time to take a look at the cameras between the LG G3 and the HTC One M8. So these were taken from exactly the same distance on a tripod, and one thing you'll notice right away is that the HTC One M8 seemed to capture a wider overall image in almost every situation you can see here. And although in a few situations you can see here the cameras were relatively close and in some cases the edge does go to the HTC One M8, I would say that the LG G3 generally produced the better image both in terms of its color processing as well as its sharpness, as it does have a 13 megapixel camera as opposed to the ultra pixel camera on the M8. So now moving on to the video quality, as you know the LG G3 is capable of recording 4K video, so that is what I did here and I actually scaled it down to the same size. What I noticed is that the LG G3 in some cases kind of over blew the image, um, overexposed everything, while the HTC One M8 was the complete opposite. It actually underexposed it, gave it a very dark look and a greenish tint to it, which was something that I wasn't really a fan of at all. But in other cases, it was a little bit closer. Again, we do notice the image is a little bit darker on the HTC One M8, but the fact that the LG G3 does have optical image stabilization and the capability of recording super sharp 4K video, I definitely think that is a huge plus. And as much as I love the HTC One M8, one of the complaints I had all the way was the rear facing camera. So hopefully they'll take a more traditional route next year and get rid of the ultra pixel sensor. So whenever you're doing a comparison involving the HTC One M8, you really gotta test out these speakers and compare them. 
The boom sound speakers are without a doubt one of the biggest selling points of the HTC One M8 and no matter what phone you are a fan of, the M8 really hands down has the best speakers. And you will know what I mean when listening to them in person. While in this case the LG G3 has a 1 watt standard speaker on the back like we see on a lot of other devices. So here's just a quick representation. When it came to the battery life of these devices, I found that they both performed very well, despite the larger battery in the LG G3 coming in at 3000mAh while the HTC One M8 coming in at 2600mAh. But although there is a size difference, expect them to be pretty similar as of course the LG G3 does have to power its high resolution Quad HD display. On the HTC One I made, I was easily able to get through one day no problem at all even on heavy use and compared to the LG G3 it was actually pretty close, however I would have to give the edge to the LG G3. One great feature however on the HTC One is the extreme power saving mode. Similar to what we saw on the Samsung Galaxy S5, it allows you to really have the battery pushed to its very maximum time of use but still able to access major utilities such as your phone, messages, mail, calendar, and calculator. For me, the battery life on the LG G3 was really beyond my expectations. I had to keep in mind that it had to power a much higher resolution than a traditional device of a 2560x1440 resolution display. And I found myself easily being able to get through one day if not about halfway through the second day and the fact that the battery is removable and swappable at any time is also very handy. But generally speaking, the battery life on both these devices should be no problem. So the last thing we're going to look at is the benchmark scores and like I always say the benchmark scores don't really mean much as they are running their custom skins and the performance of everyday use is really what you should be comparing between the devices. And with both these devices they are running pretty much the same major specs including the processor and a 1 gig difference in terms of the RAM but there are definitely many variables that play into the differences in the benchmark scores. On the HTC One M8 it came in with the 986 single core score and a 2838 in the multi core while on the LG G3 it came in at 819 and 2149. On the Anti-2 benchmark, we also notice quite a big difference. The HTC One M8 coming in at 37,157, while the LG G3 coming in at 30,918. But one of the viewers commented in the other video stating that it could be because of the amount of pixels that the LG G3 is having to push. When it came to the quadrant benchmarks, the devices were pretty much identical, with the HTC One M8 coming in at the 24,000s and the LG G3 at the 23,000s. But like I said before I went on with the benchmark test, these benchmark scores really don't speak for anything as both these devices are able to run their everyday tasks very nicely and really handle the graphics that you throw at them. So now it's time to give you guys my final verdict and at the end of the day I will tell you that these two are my current favorite Android devices. With the beautiful Quad HD display on the LG G3 and its great 13 megapixel camera with laser autofocus and looking at the HTC One M8, the nice metal construction as well as the great software built into it and those earth shattering boom sound speakers, it is very hard to definitively decide which one is better than the other and for me there's pretty much trade offs between both of them. But as for you guys, I definitely recommend that you head down to the store and try out both devices in order to decide which of the trade-offs are better for you in order to allow you to enjoy your device more, as everyone is different in terms of their needs. But aside from that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for some future content as there is much more coming and I'll see you all in the next video.